Welcome back to Puckett Fieldhouse. Game two of our men's and late women's doubleheader. The women's game ended just a few minutes ago. Central Methodist defeated Benedictine by the score of 81-64 to up their record to 14-1 and 9-1 and in conference. And now it is time for Central Methodist men's basketball. As I'm trying to get... Uh, Something to work for me, which hasn't worked yet, but, you know, I'm, a, I'm an optimist. I'm hopeful that somehow it will, but it doesn't look like it's going to. We have the Benedictine Ravens versus Central Methodist. Benedictine on the season, 8-7 and seven overall, 6-3 and three in conference play. Central Methodist, 4-11 and 11 overall, 3-6 and six in conference play. But things have gotten a little better. The Central had a good win in their last ball game. And we'll tell you that uh, they beat Culver Stockton a week ago by the score of 90 to 82 and then dropped a game at Mount Mercy in the last ball game. We will be back here Wednesday night for the same action again. Women's and men's doubleheader and that will be against as I need to look it up real quick. William Penn, and on the men's side, William Penn is the number five team in the nation in AIA. So, tall order there, but that's then. This is now. Coming into this ball game, Central Methodist scores 73.7 points per ball game and gives up 78.3 for Benedictine. They score 71.7 and give up 71.5. So neither team is high scoring, and that's been one of the issues that uh, Coach Sherman has had this year with his team is finding balanced scoring night after night as he's had a problem with that. And uh, the slow starts. Sometimes he gets a slow start. He says he just can't get two periods, two halves of sustained basketball, that there's always a lull in there somewhere that ends up costing his team a bunch of points, and then they have to battle back from behind. So we're just about set. We're a minute and something away from introduction of starting lineups and other information. We'll get you an idea about uh, leading scores for Central. They are led by Isaiah Burton, 20.3 points per game. James Bird, 18 points per ball game. Josh Robinson, 14.9. Kyle McDermott, 13.5. Christian Soderholm, 9.4. And then uh, Renard Hartman at 6.8 points per ball game. Over for the Benedictine side, they are led by Matt Austin, 13.9. Jaden Timmy, 12.4 points per ball game. Jaden Bristol, 10.5. Colby Nick Nichols, 8.6. And Wills Wallrap, 6.7 points per ball game. So. We'll have the starters for you in just a second as we're under a minute to go. Teams are getting ready to walk off the court and get ready to be introduced for the starting lineups of this ball game, this heart game. Everybody in the heart right now is chasing William Penn. They are 14-1 and one overall, 8-1 and one in the conference, and number five in the nation overall. Standings coming into this ball game. William Penn sits first, eight and one in the conference. Peru State seven and two. Mid America and Benedictine at six and three. Missouri Valley at five and five. Evangel at five and four. Baker four and five. Graceland four and six. Mount Mercy and Central Methodist three and six each. Two and eight for Culver. One and eight for Grandview. It looks like we're going to get a uh, get at least the national anthem. We'll see if we get the prayer, but we'll turn that over and let you listen to that. And then we'll be back with the starting lineups.
National Anthem is in the book, and we're just about set for action. We'll have the starting lineups for you in just a second as everybody prepares for that. We'll throw those up on the screen for you so you can see them as well as for Benedictine. Their starting lineup goes something like this. Number one, Chris Jackson, a 6'2 junior guard from Dayton, Ohio. Number 10, Jaden Bristol, a six-foot junior guard from St. Joseph, Missouri. Number 15, Jaden Timmy, a 6'6 sophomore forward from Omaha, Nebraska. Colby Nichols, number 21, 6'4 senior guard from Odessa, Missouri. And 32, Tyson Cathy, a 6'6 sophomore from Liberty, Missouri. For the Eagles. Number one, a six foot four inch sophomore from Kansas City, Missouri, Isaiah Burton. He starts at a guard. At number five, a six one senior guard. Number five, James Bird, the second from Kansas City, Missouri. Six, number 10, Josh Robinson, six two senior guard from Normal, Illinois, Josh Robinson. Christian Soderholm, a 6'6 senior from Peru, Illinois. Renard Hartman, a 6'11 junior from Magliesburg, South Africa, rounds out your starting lineups. So for Benedictine, it's Jackson, Bristol, Timmy, Nichols, and Kathy. For the Eagles, it's Burton, Bird, Robinson, Soderholm, and Hartman. And we're just about set to go. So Central starting a little bigger lineup tonight as they go uh, big with uh, Soderholm at 6'11 and Hartman at, or 6'6 and Hartman at 6'11 against the big lineup of 6'6. Uh, 6'6", six, six, and 6'2". Uh, so, with slight height advantage for the Eagles. Both teams pretty comparable athletically as far as uh, scoring and defense. So it will be Hartman jumping up against Nichols. And the ball goes over to Benedictine to get started. As this is Jackson with the ball. He's got Robinson on him. Bristol tries to go to the hoop, can't go anywhere. 15 or number two, yeah, 15. Timmy puts the shot up, no good. And out with a rebound comes Robinson. Inside it goes to Hartman. Jump hook. Or Yep, Hartman, and it's good. Hartman averages 6.8. He's got the first two points of the game with a little jump hook. Inside, banging away. Out to the corner. Back inside it goes to Timmy. Has his shot altered and blocked altogether. And that was Soderholm that did that. To the hoop. Throws up a little runner, but we'll see if they call it a shot. Doubt that they will. Chris Jackson with the foul. First foul of the ball game for him. And it'll be Robinson to bring it in. To Hartman. Back to Robinson. He's bumped as he goes to the hoop, and he's going to go shoot a pair at the free throw line. Tyson Cathy with the foul. He is a sophomore from Liberty, Missouri. That's, uh, they've got a lot of Missouri kids. Liberty, St. Joe, St. Louis, Odessa, St. Joe, St. Joe. First free throw in the air and good. 3-0. First point of the ball game for Robinson. So we're in the first half. Just a minute underway. Second free throw good as well. 
Bristol to bring the ball up the court for the Ravens. Looks to get a pick, goes around it, now looks inside, can't go anywhere. Gets it inside now to Kathy. Tries to pass inside, knocked away. And knocked away again by Hartman. Hartman active so far. To the hoop, lays it up and in. That is James Bird, the second. And it's 6 nothing Eagles. And there's a foul before the shot. That'll go on James Bird, the second. Bird averages 18 a game. Back to Bristol. Looks to go somewhere. Goes underneath the basket. Going to kick it out. Little runner on the way by Nichols and good. Colby Nichols, a 6'4 senior from Odessa. That'd be Odessa, Missouri, not Odessa, Texas. Bird. Burton going to take it to the hoop. Baseline jumper. Rattles around. No good. And a rebound by Nichols. <laughs> Fake the three, didn't take it. Bristol going to take it down the lane, try and find a way to get a shot, can't get it off. Corner jumper no good by Kathy. And walking across half court, now a little quicker pace to it is Robinson. Inside to Hartman, goes underneath the basket, all the way back out to the wing. Soderholm looked for a shot, couldn't get it anywhere. Lost the handle on it. Now out of the pack comes Jackson. Bristol. Timmy. Nichols. Knocked out of bounds by Jackson. It'll stay with Benedictine. 20 on the shot clock. Nichols going to take it out of bounds. Gets it into Bristol. Man defense by the Eagles. Soder home kind of balls knocked out of bounds again. It goes off of the hands of Isaiah Burton. It'll stay with 11 seconds to go. Nichols gets it back in bounds. And there's a blocking foul out away from the basket, and that'll go against Christian Soder home. First personal foul, team foul number two. Shot clock resets to 20. We're almost three minutes into the game. This is Bristol down the lane. Lays it off to Kathy, who lays it up and in. Nice fake. Got Hartman out of the way. And Kathy lays it up, 6-4. Soder home to Burton. Tries to go through traffic into the corner. Lefty, three-pointer on the way and good for Josh Robinson. Five in a game for him early, and it's a 9-4, five-point advantage. Nichols, Kathy, baseline, wants to spin and go to the hoop. Can't figure out how to do that. Ball's knocked up in the air, ends up back in Kathy's hands, but he tries to make a pass to Chris Jackson, goes off his hands and out of bounds, belonging to the Eagles. Not quite four minutes into this first half. Eagles off to a five-point advantage early. This is Robinson with the basketball to Burton. Bird. Now he's got a switch off. He's got a mismatch that he likes. Gets the ball to Hartman. Goes off of a Ravens player and out of bounds. It'll stay. Eric Cruz checks into the ball game. A 6-7 sophomore from St. Louis. And Kathy checks out. Quick jumper off the inbounds pass. Good by Bird. James Bird to second. He's got four, and it's 11 to four. And a good start for the Eagles. Burton down the lane. Scoops it up. Too hard. Can't get it to go. Hartman with a rebound. Gets it ahead. Comes up to Robinson. Corner it goes. Soderholm takes baseline. And it's a tied up ball as Hartman went to the hoop, was tied up. It will stay with Central. 
Wills Walrap into the ball game, number zero. A 6'3 senior from Omaha, Nebraska. Burton, inside it goes. Height advantage right there if Hartman can figure out how to get around. Jump hook that he started the game with comes up short. And Cruz with into the rebound just into the ball game. Burton with it brings it up, or Bristol rather. Nichols, Cruz, wall wrap. Takes it to the baseline. Nichols with a little hang and move, gets it to go. Four points in the ball game for him. 11-6 is our score. Alley-oop and a dunk by Christian Soderholm. Nice play off of that. Set up very well. Soderholm, four points in the ball game, including that dunk. This is Cruz with the ball. Tries to drive. Can't go anywhere. Timmy down the lane. Lays it up and in. Jaden Timmy. Thirteen eight. Robinson dribbles left. Bristol all over him. Soder home. Burton. Comes a pick. Burton steps back. Three in the air. Rims out no good. Soder home with a rebound. Another three on the way, and that one by James Bird. The second is good. And we're going to have a conversation with somebody. Oh, I think uh, Christian Soderholm got hit in the mouth on the last time down the defensive floor, and he's got some blood that they're going to have to deal with. So getting ready to check into the ball game. Seth Stegman going to check into the ball game. 15, 16 to 8. While they deal with Soderholm over on the side. His cut, get that stopped, get the blood cleaned up. He'll be back shortly. Bristol. Wall wrap back to Bristol, down the lane. Kicks it around. Wall rip wants to take it down the lane. And a blocking foul, and the basket's going to count. And that's going to go on Stegman under, as he was underneath the basket. Blocking foul. And to the line, Will Rap, or wa Will's Wall Rap, my fault. His first two, and he's going to try and finish this out with a three-point play, the, the traditional route. Stegman over on the sideline behind the bench. Looks like he might have a cut below his eye as he's applying pressure to just below his left eye. And we've got a whistle to stop. It's one free throw as the basket was good. Now it's 16-10. They have the scoreboard updated and have it correct. So wall wrap at the free throw line. Makes it, three-point play completed, and 16-11. And this is Robinson bringing the ball up the floor. Bird tries to pass the ball inside, and a foul called. Eric Cruz with the foul, his first, team foul number three. Hunter Schneider checks into the ball game, a 6'8 freshman from Overland Park, Kansas. Stegeman around to Robinson. Back to Bird. He wants to take it down the lane. Puts up a runner, can't get it to go. And quickly up the side, this is 20 Matt Austin into the ball game. Tried to go inside. Tipped and stolen away as it was tipped away and ended up in James Bird's hands. Stegeman. Corner, tries to go inside to Hartman, can't get it there. Round it comes to this side. This is Burton with the basketball, left wing. Hands it back to Robinson. 11 on the shot clock. Burt, Robinson down the lane. Tries to find something to do. Hartman, nothing to do, so he turns around and lays it up and scores. Six points in the ball game for him, and it's an 18 to 11 ball game. Bristol down the lane. Back out to wall wrap. Austin with it. Down the lane. Lays it up. Can't get it to go. Tipped around. 
and ends up in the hands of Bird. Robinson wants to go to the hoop. Kicks it to the corner for three on the way. No good. Tipped around as Burton missed the three. Long rebound ends up in Benedictine's hand. They've got it just under 12 to go. Bristol, inside it goes, tipped around. Nice play, almost stolen, is stolen. As a nice play by Bird there to get it and gets it out. Robinson brings it up and he's gonna be fouled by Bristol out around half court. That'll be his first personal foul. Kyle McDermott into the ball game. And Jacob Moore, Moore a 6'4 junior. Odessa, Missouri, so a couple of Odessa boys on the court at the same time for different teams. Stegman to Bird. Corner three, no good. That was Stegman. Seth Stegman who missed it. This is Austin trying to take it to the hoop. Now he's trapped in no man's land. Tipped around, ends up back out front. This is Wallrap trying to figure out a way to get to the hoop. Puts it up, no good. And Moore rips the rebound. Bird to Robinson. He's going to back it out and let it sit for a minute. To the hoop, foul call. We'll see who that's called again. Foul is on number 31, Nizer Scott. He's a 5'10 sophomore guard from Topeka, Kansas. At the free throw line is Josh Robinson. He's got that one. That gets him to six in the ball game and stretches the lead out a little further. Checking back in, Colby Nichols. So now the two Odessa boys are on the court at the same time. And another Eagle getting ready to check in. Two more Ravens getting ready to check in after this free throw, if it's made. And it is. Jake, Jake Branham into the ball game. And out for a break is Josh Robinson with his seven points. Into the ball game. Heiser Scott has the ball right now. Kathy back in for... Benedictine. That's Nichols with it. All the way across, this is Matt Austin trying to find a way to the hoop. Fade away jumper, won't go, tipped around, and ends up in the hands of James Bird to second, and he's gonna direct traffic and bring it down the court. To the corner it goes, McDermott with a three on the way, and good. Kyle McDermott with a basket, three-pointer, and that puts the lead at 23-11 with 10.26 to go here in, in the first half. We'll take a quick break and come back right after this word from one of our sponsors on the Eagle Sports Network. At last, an approach to teaching and learning that connects the traditional classroom to the real world at Central Methodist University. Now you can learn the way you live and the way you'll work with the new Digital U, available only on the campus of CMU. Be more. We're back. Time out by Benedictine. As the Eagles are out to a 23-11 start, good start for them. They are shooting... 57% from the floor right now, 8 of 14. Benedictine, not bad, 5 of 12, 41.67%. The Eagles, 3 for 6 from 3 points, 50%. Benedictine, 0 for 1. Conversation now, I don't know if who it is. Uh, Maybe about who called the timeout. The only one they really could call timeout at that point, I believe, was Benedictine. But we're back to play. 10-22. Nichols with it. 
Inside it goes to Kathy, double team, nowhere to go. Kicks it back out. Nichols looks for a shot. Stop there. Onto the wing to Scott. Long three, hits the top of the backboard, no good. Stegeman with a rebound, and here come the Eagles. 12-point advantage and the basketball. Crossover to the hoop, can't get it to go. Looking for the foul. That was Bird. And stepping on the sideline with a little bit of pressure. As Jake Branham with a little bit of pressure. And now we're going to get a timeout, and I think this one will probably count, as we'll see. We'll just keep it here. Don't know who called it, or uh, we're looking at the scoreboard. Uh, it shows, uh, if I could find out where they keep the timeouts, I'll tell you. It shows six for the Eagles and five for Benedictine, so this must be a Benedictine timeout as we get ready to go. 9.50 to go. Eagles with 23 points in the first 10 minutes and 10 seconds, only 11 points for the Ravens as it looks like Christian Soderholm is patched up and ready to come back in. We'll see who's on the floor for the Eagles when they come out. Fast start to the ball game. James Bird to second with seven points right now. He's the leading scorer on the floor for the Eagles. Lots of substitutes and we're back to action here from Puckett Fieldhouse. Like I say, we will be back here Wednesday night when the women and the men face off against William Penn. Women's game tips 5.30, men's game 7.30, give or take a little bit. Stegeman, ball inbounds to Brainham. McDermott, who just hit the three, back to Stegeman, top of the key. Going to run around. Here's Brainham outside. And I think they're going to call a flop on number five, James Bird, to second. That's his second foul. He's spent a lot of time on the floor, and he's getting ready to get a break as Josh Robinson will come back in because I don't think he did much of anything except fall down. Sherman asked for a uh, explanation of that. And if uh, Coach Sherman's mom and dad are watching out in Colorado, welcome to the ball game. Inside it goes to Caffley, puts it up, and it gets the rattle around as Hartman got a piece of it, but it still found its way into the bottom of the hip, and it's ten, a 10-point advantage. Stegeman. Branham. Inside Stegeman. Hartman backing in, can't get anywhere, swings it back around, and Robinson with the basketball. Nine, eight on the play clock into the corners. McDermott did just hit a three from there, misses that one. And out with the rebound is Timmy to Bristol. Mass Austin with the basketball. Back over here to Timmy, back to Bristol. He's going to take it down the lane, finds Kathy underneath. He's fouled on the way up. And Tyson Cathy will go to the free throw line. 6'6", sophomore out of Liberty, Missouri. First free throw rattles around and falls. Hartman back in. Soderholm checks back out. Foul was on McDermott, his first foul, makes both free throws. 23-15, leads down under 10. It's an eight-point advantage with 8.36 to go here in the ballgame. Branham, nice cut and roll, but ball's picked. Chris Jackson picks the pocket of Robinson. Right up, takes it down, little jumper from the lane, gets it to go. That's Chris Jackson's. First two points of the ball game, and it's down to six and a little bit of the scoring law that Coach Sherman has had to deal with during the course of the year. Sometimes he finds it hard to, to find guys on the court that can score at any point in time as they're trying to get it inside to Hartman. He's too far away from the basket to do any good. McDermott spins, can't find anywhere to go. Kicks it back out to Robinson. 
Seven on the clock. Mismatch with Kathy, and Robinson puts it up and in. And Robinson was in there with a 6-6 and managed to get his shot out over the top of it. Bristol, top of the key. Kathy back to Bristol. On the wing to Nichols. Other side, that's Jackson with a three on the way, no good. And there's a foul on Tyson Kathy over the back as he knocked Hartman out of bounds. And we'll see what the 32, they say first foul on him. That's foul number five. Both sides have five team fouls. McDermott. Lefty tries to get to the hoop. Puts up a runner and banks it in. Kyle McDermott with two. He's got five in the ball game off the bench. Leads back to 10 with 7.05 to go. Nichols with Robinson on him. Bristol, McDermott on him. Kathy inside against Hartman. Spins, moves, spins, can't get anywhere to go. Kits it back out to Jackson. And he's going to be fouled on the way to the hoop by Branham. He's going to get two shots as they say he was shooting the basketball. That will put the next central foul will put the Ravens in the bonus for the remainder of the half, which has got 651 left in it right now. Jackson at the free throw line. First one's on the way and good. First free throw of the evening for him. Only the fourth free throw attempted. Both sides are four for four from the line. And there's the second one is good as well. Stegeman inbounds the ball and Robinson will bring it up the court. Eight point advantage again for the Eagles. McDermott runs out off a double screen. Branham with it. Hartman a long way from the basket. Stegeman underneath. Branham finds him, finds him cutting Branham underneath. Jake Branham with a basket. His first two of the ball game, and it's back to 10. Stegeman, Nichols down the lane, throws up a runner and gets it to go. Colby Nichols, he's got six in the ball game. Matt Austin gets ready to check back in at the next dead ball for Benedictine. Branham, McDermott, over to Robinson. Stegeman with a pick, he's got a big on him. Branham in the corner, thought about a three, but he didn't catch it cleanly. Stegeman in the other corner, right corner, pulls up. 12-foot jumper, halfway down, won't stay. Jackson out with a rebound, heads up the court. Going to slow it down and wait for Kathy to get there. Timmy with it. Bristol. Jackson cuts down the lane, lays it up and in. Nice look from Bristol to Jackson. And it's down to a six-point advantage. Robinson across half court. Stegeman, Branham, Hartman, Kathy, almost picking up his second foul a long way from the basket as he tries to cut him off. Robinson, now he turns around to guard Robinson. Robinson realizes he's got a big on him. Going to take it to the hoop, goes right past him, lays it up to Hartman, who lost the handle, but gets it back and puts it in, and he's got eight in the ball game. Bristol. Has to go around Hartman. Kathy underneath on the pick and roll. Gets it to go as Hartman was jumped out to stop the ball. And his man scores inside. Back to six. Under five to go here in this fast-moving first half of action. Robinson still wants to go. Branham going to drive the lane. Little floater on the way. Bumped and fouled. He'll go to the free throw line. Jake Branham. Chris Jackson with the foul, his second personal foul. Two subs getting ready to come in for Benedictine, one for Central Methodist after this first free throw by Branham. Branham averages 4.3 per game. And that one's good. He's got three points in the game. Burton checks back in for the Eagles. This here, Scott checks back in. 20, Matt Austin back in, and 24, Eric Cruz back in. Second free throw. Seven-point advantage. 
make it eight. No missed free throws to speak of at this point. Bristol with the basketball. There's where they just got the pick and roll. This time it goes to the corner for a three, and it's good. Jaden Timmy with the three-pointer. He's got five in the ball game as they tried to cover the, the uh, roller this time, and they did, but they left Timmy open in the corner for a three. Robinson, McDermott, tries to get to the hoop, banks it up and in. Ah, McDermott, he's got seven off the bench. Bristol. Austin with a long three, can't get it to go. Cruz with a rebound, reset. This is Bristol, going to take it down the lane. Blocked by the big man inside, Hartman. Knocks it out of bounds, 15 on the shot clock. Underneath the Ravens basket, their basketball. 3.44 to go here in the first half. Back out to the corner. That's Timmy who just hit a three. Kicks it out. Three-pointer on the way by Cruz. No good. And Branham with a rebound. Eagles going to work a little clock as they get it across. McDermott. Burton. Branham. Robinson. Down the lane. Not hard enough, comes up short as Burton missed it. And here comes Timmy with the basketball. Gets it to Scott. Scott wants to go baseline. And he's ridden out of bounds by Branham, and that'll be foul number two on Jake Branham. Branham, 6-1 freshman guard from Springfield, Missouri. Checking into the ball game is number four, Trey Meany. Also back in, Christian Soderholm going to give Hartman a breast. So Soderholm's fixed up with his eye. Free throw no good. And Meany just into the game with a rebound. Trey Meany, a 6'5 sophomore out of Columbia. Meany with the basketball here. Skips it all the way across. Burton down the lane. Into the corner, McDermott. Ball fake, gets guy out of the way and hits a three. Kyle McDermott, double digits off the bench for him. He's got 10 in the ball game now. Lead back to 10. Bristol, Scott, pick from Timmy. Back inside it goes to Timmy. He's got... McDermott on him, passes inside to Bristol. Going to have to bring it out, reset with nine on the play clock. Scoop shot won't go. Soderholm bothered the shot, got the rebound. And hands the ball to Robinson, who's going to bring it across. 38-28, just over two, and a timeout called by the Eagles. We'll take a quick 30-second break here and let some of our sponsors get their word out to you as well. By a used car, how do you know that hasn't been in an accident? Experience water damage or worse, have major engine problems. This is Kyle Wymouth with WK. Here, all pre-owned vehicles less than 10 years old and under 100,000 miles come standard with peace of mind, wrapped up inside a six-month, 6,000-mile powertrain warranty. And because we sell more vehicles than anyone in West Central Missouri, we get more quality trades, so we don't have to shop the used car auctions. For used car peace of mind, visit WK in Sedalia, Boonville, and at WKFamily.com. We're back, thanks to WK and to the Rick Ball Auto Mall Group for their help with sponsorship of this. And I will tell you, I have bought a vehicle from each one of those groups. I bought a uh, 2020 Equinox from WK, and I have a 2019 Ford Fusion from Rick Ball Ford in Sedalia. Both of those experiences were much better than any of the other car experiences buying a vehicle I ever had. So if you get a chance, WKFamily.com. RickBall.com. Check out their inventory. Check out what you can get. McDermott gets away with a walk, but he dribbles it off of a foot, and it ends up in the hands of 
Matt Austin, and there will be a foul out a long way from the basket, and that will uh, they're in the bonus at this point in time as that's foul number eight. Both sides will be in the bonus from here on out. So Bristol's going to leave, and Wallrap comes in. Austin at the free throw line. First free throw is good. And looking at the uh, free throw stuff as uh, Central is six for six. Benedictine five for six. So good free throw shooting here. Didn't jinx him. He makes them both. Eight point advantage, 152 to go. As Robinson walks it up. Burton looks for somewhere to go, gets it to Soderholm. He tries to turn and go up for a shot, but he's foul. He'll go to the free throw line and shoot. And that foul goes on wall wrap, his first foul. Soderholm at the free throw line. First free throw rattles around and falls out. First miss of the ball game. Back of the rim, front of the rim, crawls in. 39-30 with 1.35 to go. This is Scott with the ball, takes it down the lane, kicks it to the corner. Timmy with a three, too hard, won't go. Tipped around, Scott runs it back down, drops it off for somebody. Nobody there, and it ends up being picked up by Burton, who takes it to the hoop, dunks, but it will be an offensive foul on somebody before Soderholm was able to dunk the basketball. We'll see if it was on the pass or on the dunk. It's called on the pass as Isaiah Burton passed the ball, made the move to the hoop, continued on, and was called for a charge. It's his second foul, and he's going to go to the bench, and Seth Stegman comes back into the ball game. Scott, man defense by the Eagles. Austin, top of the key with Meany on him, reverses. Soderholm on him, that's a mismatch. Tries to scoop it up, doesn't get it to go, doesn't draw any rim either, so the play, play clock doesn't reset. But a spin move in and up by Eric Cruz, and he scores. His first points of the ball game, 39-32. 23 on the shot clock, 45 on the game clock. So both sides, if Central hurries, they could get a two for one out of this. But it looks like they're more interested in getting a good shot, which is what they should do. Trey Meany with a three. Rims out no good. Cruz with a rebound. Just one second difference between, yep, and they turned the game uh, play clock off, and we're down as they were just uh, almost identical. So we're down on, on the play clock only here to end this, 39-32. Central trying to get to halftime with their seven-point advantage. Benedictine trying to cut it down to five or even four. Wall rep, Austin, down the lane, scoops it around. Shot up and in by Scott, and that will end the first half with the score 39-34. We will take a break, about five minutes or so, and then we will be back with our halftime stats and some information for you. Here from Puckett Fieldhouse, 39-34, Eagles lead at halftime. We'll be back right after this in about five minutes on the Eagles Sports Network. At last, an approach to teaching and learning that connects the traditional classroom to the real world at Central Methodist University. Now you can learn the way you live and the way you'll work with the new Digital U, available only on the campus of CMU. Be more. Here at Rick Ball Ford Lincoln, my team is driven to be different. Different in a great way because we're going to give you the very best customer satisfaction anywhere. One of the parts about our dealership you will love is our 1995 oil changes. You get a free alignment check 
you get a free multi-point inspection, you get a free car wash. Everybody will get all of that combined for $19.95. Stop by today or come visit us at rickball.com. When you buy a used car, how do you know that hasn't been in an accident? Experience water damage or worse, have major engine problems. This is Kyle Wymouth with WK. Here, all pre-owned vehicles less than 10 years old and under 100,000 miles come standard with peace of mind, wrapped up inside a six-month, 6,000-mile powertrain warranty. And because we sell more vehicles than anyone in West Central Missouri, we get more quality trades, so we don't have to shop the used car auctions. For used car peace of mind, visit WK in Sedalia, Boonville, and at WKFamily.com. How do you make traditional education more effective for today's job market? You transform it at Central Methodist University. Now the only limit to your education is your imagination. The new digital you, available only on the campus of CMU. Be more. 0% for 72 months, plus generous cash savings on our most popular trucks and SUVs now at WK. Enjoy 0% for 72 months, plus cash back on Silverado and Sierra trucks, most Buick SUV models, and the Acadia Terrain and the all-new 2020 Equinox. Winter is here, and there's no better time to get behind the wheel of a powerful new four-wheel drive than now at WK in Sedalia, WK Ford, Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram in Boonville, and at WKFamily.com. You uh, were cutting up paper. What was that for? Yeah, what was that all about? That you guys have been arguing about who, how the dealership's going to be named in the future. So I just thought we'd cut up the names and put an equal amount in there and then have a drawing, and that's what the name will be. Hey, Ryan and Ross, can you come look at this trade in? Rickball Auto Group. All right. That's it. Dang. They all, they all say Rickball. Rick They're all Rickball Auto Group. <laughs> and don't forget, shop us online at rickball.com. We're back. It's halftime at Central Methodist. Puckett Field House, 39-34. Eagles lead the Benedictine Ravens. Halftime stats are up on your screen for you to take a look at. Field goal percentage, Central 53.85. They're 14 of 26 from the floor, shooting for them, for Benedictine, they're 13 of 28 for 46.4% on three-pointers. One for seven for Benedictine, 14.3. Four for nine for Central, 44.4. Free throws, each team seven of eight, 87.5%. Rebounding-wise, Benedictine with 15 rebounds to 13 for Central. And of that, four offensive rebounds for Benedictine, one for Central Methodist. On the turnover part, Benedictine with six, Central Methodist with four. So the uh, numbers that kind of jump out a little bit, good three-point shooting and not a lot of turnovers as the Eagles have taken care of the ball. They're shooting a good percentage from the floor. They're shooting a good percentage from threes. And they're shooting well from the free throw line and not turning the ball over a whole lot as I look at the uh, Steals, Central has four steals, Benedictine with two. Fouls, nine fouls against Central Methodist in the first half. Seven for Benedictine, so that is uh, a little bit of a thing. I don't think anybody has three for Central, but they have several players with two. And we will go over, and I'll, I'll give you those numbers in just a second as soon as I can uh, get my laptop to cooperate a little bit. Scoring for Central in the ball game. Kyle McDermott off the bench with 10. Nine points for Josh Robinson. Eight points for Renard Hartman. Seven for James Bird, the second. Four points for Jake Branham. And one point for Christian Soderholm. He's got more than one point. He had a dunk. But they only show him with one point. So I don't know who got the dunk unless they gave that to... Uh, Hartman, I don't think so. I don't know where it went, but it went somewhere. For Benedictine, they are led by Tyson Cathy with eight, and then six points for Chris Jackson, six points for Colby Nichols, five points for Jaden Timmy, three points for Wills Walrup, and then two points Matt Austin, two points 
Eric Cruz, and two points, Nasir Scott. So 39-34 is our halftime score. Need a time team back out yet? Yeah, we still have six and a half minutes before the start of the second half. Eagles got off to a big start, to, big uh, start, got out to a 12-point lead. Hold on and lead by five here at the half in this ball game that has two teams in the bottom echelon of the standings in the heart. And I will tell you, uh, mention this in the first ball game, and I'll mention it here in the second ball game because it's pretty important, I think. The Heart of America Athletic Conference has a Commissioner's Cup that is given to the school with the highest point total throughout the year based on their uh, athletic endeavors. And if I see if I can, uh, uh, it says the Hart Commissioner's Cup was developed as an award to annually recognize achievements of conference student athletes and member institutions. And they're based on conference standings at the end of the season. And for the Commissioner's Cup, at the end of first semester, halfway through, Central Methodist is leading the Commissioner's Cup with 35 total points. And they got those 35 points after claiming both the regular season and postseason titles for men's soccer and women's soccer. And Central's volleyball team added to those numbers by claiming the postseason trophy in a five-set thriller. So they have 35. Grandview next at 26. Evangel third at 23 and a half. Baker with 23. Benedictine 19 and a half. Mid-America with 17. Uh, Mount Mercy in seventh place with 16. Valley with 14. William Penn with nine. Clark at number 10 with eight. Culver Stockton and Graceland are uh, tied at 11 with four total points and Peru State with two. So that's how the Commissioner's Cup stands right now. And that's a nice thing. Then Central Methodist leads that with by way of the men's, women's soccer and volleyball racking up big numbers for them. We've got about four and a half minutes to go, so we're going to run this uh, two-minute ad from Central Methodist, and then we'll be back with uh, more close to, to the time to start half number two. So we'll listen to this ad from CMU, and we'll be back in about two minutes. last an approach to teaching and learning that connects the traditional classroom to the real world at Central Methodist University. Now you can learn the way you live and the way you'll work with the new Digital U available only on the campus of CMU. Be more. Here at Rickball Ford Lincoln, my team is driven to be different. Different in a great way because we're going to give you the very best customer satisfaction anywhere. One of the parts about our dealership you will love is our 1995 oil changes. You get a free alignment check, you get a free multi-point inspection, you get a free car wash. Everybody will get all of that combined for 1995. Stop by today or come visit us at rickball.com. When you buy a used car, how do you know that it hasn't been in an accident? Experience water damage or worse, have major engine problems. This is Kyle Wymouth with WK. Here, all pre-owned vehicles less than 10 years old and under 100,000 miles come standard with peace of mind, wrapped up inside a six-month, 6,000-mile powertrain warranty. And because we sell more vehicles than anyone in West Central Missouri, we get more quality trades, so we don't have to shop the used car auctions. For used car peace of mind, visit WK in Sedalia, Boonville, and at WKFamily.com. How do you make traditional education more effective for today's job market? You transform it at Central Methodist University.
Now the only limit to your education is your imagination. The new digital you, available only on the campus of CMU. Be more. 0% for 72 months, plus generous cash savings on our most popular trucks and SUVs now at WK. Enjoy 0% for 72 months, plus cash back on Silverado and Sierra trucks, most Buick SUV models, and the Acadia Terrain in the all-new 2020 Equinox. Winter is here, and there's no better time to get behind the wheel of a powerful new four-wheel drive than now at WK in Sedalia, WK Ford, Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram in Boonville, and at WKFamily.com. You uh, were cutting up paper. What was that for? Yeah, what was that all about? That you guys have been arguing about who, that how the dealership's going to be named in the future. So I just thought we'd cut up the names and put an equal amount in there, and then have a drawing, and that's what the name will be. Hey Ryan and Ross, can you come look at this trade-in? Rickball Auto Group. All right, that's a they, they all say say Rickball. Rickball. They're all Rickball Auto Group. <laughs> and don't forget, shop us online at rickball.com. We're back, just about ready for half number two. Eagles lead 39-34. Looking around, I can't uh, figure out from the scoreboard who's got the possession. It's pointing towards... Benedictine, so I think they will have the possession. Again, the Eagles shot 53%, almost 54% from the floor in the first half, 44% from the three-point line, 87% from the free throw line. Uh, were slightly out-rebounded, 15-13, did not turn the ball over a lot, four turnovers for six for Benedictine, and we're ready to go. It's Temi and Bristol on the floor, Jackson. Kathy and Nichols. Inside it goes. That's Timmy. Kicks it across. Jackson with a three on the way, and it's good. Chris Jackson. He's got nine, and it's a two-point ball game for the Eagles. Stegeman with it. Robinson. Knocked out of bounds. It will stay with Central. It is Burton, Bird, Robinson, Stegeman, and Hartman. That's Burton with the basketball. He's going to take it to the hoop, kicks it to the corner. Stegeman falling away, comes up short. Bristol with a rebound and a chance for a tie or the lead. Jackson to the hoop, can't get it to go. Kathy with a rebound, kicks it out. Nichols with a three on the way, can't get it to go. Tipped around, and Hartman pulls it down. Robinson with it. Dribbles right, looks inside. Hartman to get the basketball with Kathy on him. Jump hook, rolls around, all the way around and down. Hartman now with 10 points in the ball game. Back to a four-point advantage. Bristol with the ball. Jackson in the corner. It goes to Nichols. He's going to skip it all the way over to, to Timmy, who's going to try and get down a lane. Jackson, ball fake. Nobody goes for that. Bristol with it. Ten on the shot clock. Underneath, tipped, and it goes out of bounds, and it goes off of Nichols. And it's Central Methodist basketball. Coach Jeff Sherman in his 35th season at Central Methodist. His assistant is his son, Matt. Pretty cool. Fifth season for him at CMU. Inside it goes. Hartman had position. Goes underneath the basket and lays it up and in with a reverse. 12 points, and it's up to a six-point lead with 18 to go. Bristol's got it. Jackson, left side, ducks in, comes back out. Bristol going to use a pick, goes baseline, goes to the hoop, tries to get it in to Nichols, but it's knocked out of bounds by the Eagles, and it will be Ravens basketball underneath their own basket. Bristol to inbound it, gets it into Jackson. Ten on the clock. 
Inside it goes. That's Timmy with a can't get it, misses. And then Kathy with the put back, but a foul is called, and that's going to go on James Bird, the second, and that'll be foul number three on him. He's got three. Branham's got two. First free throw good. Burton's got two. Kathy's second free throw rims out no good. Timmy fights for it, but it's saved by Stegeman, and it comes to Robinson. Quickly down the floor to Burton. Gives it up, three in the air, and good for James Bird, the second. He's got 10 in the ball game now, two players in double figures for the Eagles. Nichols trying to move. Kathy against Hartman, kicks it back out. Timmy into the corner. Back to Timmy on the block. Bumping around, gets a shot blocked by Hartman. All the way out to Burton, down the lane, lays it up and gives it off to James Bird to second and a basket for Bird. He's got back-to-back -back baskets. He's got 12 and the lead's up to 10 again. Down the four, up to 10, 6-0 run. Seven-zero run, actually. Kathy spins. Hartman holds his ground. Nichols going to come around. Runner on the lane, up and good. Jake Nichols with, or not Jake Nichols, sorry. Colby Nichols. Eight points for him. Stegeman hands it off to Burton. Wants to split. Stegeman three from the deep in the corner, no good. Bristol with a rebound. Timmy with a three, can't get it to go. And a travel on Kathy as he tried to come down and dribble, but he couldn't, and he takes an extra step, and he's out of the game, coming out. Eric Cruz back in, Nizir Scott back in, Matt Austin back in, and Wills Walrup back in. So I am looking to see, and it may be that it is Timmy the only one that's left on the floor from the previous five that were out there. Mc uh, McDermott back into the game, Kyle McDermott. He had a big first half off the bench, and Branham had a good first half as well. McDermott. Robinson picked by McDermott. Stegeman trying to get the ball inside. Hartman double team, can't get it there. Three on the way, back of the rim, top of the backboard, can't get it to go. Hartman with a rebound. Shot was taken by Robinson, bounced around, and Bernard Hartman with the rebound. Hartman to the free throw line. His first free throws of the evening. Back of the rim, no good. Foul was on Walrip. Walrap, his second personal foul. 15-33, four and a half minutes into the second half. It was a five-point lead at half. It's up to eight right now. Hartman's second free throw is short. Wall wrap with a rebound. To the basket, lays it up and in. That's Scott. Nasir Scott. Christian Soderholm getting ready to check back in next dead ball for the Eagles. McDermott, they've made an adjustment to him. Branham, McDermott. Inside to Hartman, lays it up close to the basket, four or five foot, jump hook, good. Hartman with 14 in the ball game. Averages under seven and he's got double that right now. Wall wrap, Timmy to the hoop, stuffed by Hartman, at least his third block, we'll look that up in a minute. Robinson to the hoop, lays it up and in. That is his third block of the ball game. And it's back to a 10 point advantage. Scott, 
Branham on him now. Cruz trying to get to the basket. Lays it up, won't go as Walrap missed the little chippy. Robinson with it. Coach Sherman calls out a play and says move. And going 1-4. Getting out of the way so Robinson can deal with it. McDermott a three from the corner. Hot in the first half. Misses that his first shot here in the second half. And the Ravens have the basketball. This is Scott across half court. 13.50 to go. Left all alone. Pulls up for a three. No good. Hartman with another rebound. And a timeout called by Central Methodist. We'll see. It's a 30-second timeout. Nope, it's going to be a full timeout. So let's take a 30-second break as we pull up one of our sponsors. We'll be back in 30 seconds on the Eagle Sports Network. Buy a used car. How do you know that hasn't been in an accident? Experience water damage or worse, have major engine problems. This is Kyle Wymouth with WK. Here, all pre-owned vehicles less than 10 years old and under 100,000 miles come standard with peace of mind, wrapped up inside a six-month, 6,000-mile powertrain warranty. And because we sell more vehicles than anyone in West Central Missouri, we get more quality trades, so we don't have to shop the used car auctions. For used car peace of mind, visit WK in Sedalia, Boonville, and at WKFamily.com. We're back. You're watching the Eagles dance team during the timeout. So if you're a parent wanting to see your daughter, there she is. 13.38 to go. Ten-point advantage for the Eagles. It was five at the half. They've come out, scored some baskets. Stretched the lead out to ten. Only one player in foul trouble. That would be James Bird. The second. It's McDermott. Soderholm. Stegman. Robinson with the basketball. And Branham, who's cutting underneath the basket. That's Soderholm with it there. Gives it back to Robinson. Ten on the shot clock. He tries to go lane. Can't. Too many people standing too close together for somebody to guard. They're down to three. Robinson with a three on the way. Hits the back of the rim. No good. Kathy had it. Lost it. But it goes out off of Seth Stegeman. And it will be Ravens basketball under the central basket. Scott will bring it up the court as we're at 3-10, 13 10 to go here in the ball game. Again, we'll be back on Wednesday night. Here from Puckett Fieldhouse. As William Penn will be here. Austin takes it to the hoop, lays it up and in. He's got four points in the ball game. Branham with a basketball. Coach Sherman rewarding him with some play. Soderman has the ball stripped away from him, and Matt Austin comes up with a basketball. Gets a pick from... Kathy lays it up, but he's bumped and fouled, and he'll go to the free throw line. Kyle McDermott picks up his second foul. Foul number two team-wise in the second half, and Matt Austin to the free throw line. First one rattles around but falls. Five points in the ball game. Colby Nichols back in. Wall wrap out. Second free throw for Austin. Good as well. And Bristol back in. Scott out for the Ravens. James Bird the second back in. And Isaiah Burton back in for the Eagles. So other than Hartman on the court, Stegeman is the only non-starter out there right now in Hartman's spot. The rest are the starting four from the ball game. And it will be Josh Robinson. It's a six-point advantage for the Eagles. They need a basket. This is Burton. Robinson. Burton. Bird. Just back into the ball game. Doesn't take it. 
free throw line jumper won't go. Tipped around as Burton missed it. Hung on the rim. And Soderholm was not able to get it. Ravens with the basketball. Austin, long three, straight away. Rattles around and good. All of a sudden, Matt Austin is the scoring machine. He's got uh, the last seven points for the Ravens, and it's down to a three-point advantage. Robinson looks. They're settling. They're having to settle for long shots. Nothing inside right now. Robinson tries to get something inside. Misses. And Bristol with a rebound and a chance to tie with a three for Benedictine. It's Matt Austin who's been the one that's been hot lately. He averages 13.9. He's got eight. Easy layup for Kathy. And it's down to one. And Hartman getting ready to check back in the ball game. So a 9-0 run here for the Ravens. As Robinson hands it off, down the lane, back out into the corner. Stegeman for a three from there, nails it, says Stegeman. First points of the ball game for him. Cruz to Bristol, knocked out of bounds, and they say not touched by the Eagles, and it'll be off of Bristol out of bounds. Hartman checks back in. Temme checks back in. Soderholm going to go to the bench for the time being. Back to a four-point advantage. 10.40 to go. Robinson brings it across half court. Stegman's three just a moment ago. Stop the run. To the basket. Put up. No good. Knocked around, and a foul will be called on Hartman. He lost control of the ball, got his shot altered underneath and then tried to get it back and ends up with a foul. First personal foul, team foul number three. He's got 14 points. Bird, the second, got 12. And Robinson's got 10. Only player in double figures on the other side is Tyson Cathy with 11. But Austin's trying to stop that right now as he hits another basket. He's got nine points. He's got 11 all together and nine of them in about a two and a half minute span here in the second half. Three twos and a three. Robinson gonna get a pick from Hartman. Instead he rolls to the basket, lays it up and in and he's gonna shoot a free throw to go with it. Renard Hartman with some athleticism for a 6'11 young man. And there's going to be a timeout called. And I think that is by the Ravens. I'm looking at Hartman's numbers here. He is a 6'11, 240 pound junior from South Africa. So nice get for Coach Sherman there. I want to tell you about the, all of Coach Sherman and his staff over on the bench. Jeff Sherman in his 35th season. I went to school with Jeff Sherman. Matt Sherman, his son, assistant head coach in his fifth season. Grad assistant Jay Jones in his second year. Carl Martin, a grad assistant in his second year. William Anderson, student assistant in his second year. And Josh Morrow, student assistant in his second year. So good coaching staff for Coach Sherman and his bunch here in Fayette. I want to say thank you to Shelby Scott, the SID here at CMU for getting us set up for this ball game tonight. Hope you're enjoying it as we try to bring you the sights and the sounds as we see them from this ball game. 57-53, 9.47 to go here in the ball game. Can the Eagles hold on? And Hartman's going to be at the free throw line trying to finish up a traditional three-point play. He's got 16 in the ball game. He averages just over six a ball game. But he has been assertive around the basket along with his three blocks. And that free throw crawls in. He missed the first two he had, so he's one for three from the line. And the lead is back to five. And Bristol brings it across. Outside, look for a down the baseline, can't get it to go. Bristol swinging it around. Austin, who they've been told is scoring all the points right now. Kathy tries to back in against 
Hartman, little hook shot, half hook, goes in. Kathy with 13. Austin with 11, the two scorers in double figures. For the Ravens, three-point advantage. 9-10. Hartman too far away from the basket to be real effective. Spins in the lane, hook shot goes, won't fall as he tries to get it off there. Nichols, Bristol now going to reset at top of the key. Timmy coming to set a screen. Stegeman now on him. Here goes Austin to the basket. Collision underneath as two central players land on each other. The basket by Austin is good as Hartman fell. They tell him to stay away is whoever it is. That would be number five. James Bird the second gets up and says he's okay, but we'll see if he uh, walks to the bench as he's holding, rubbing the back of his head a little bit. And he heads to the bench and Kyle McDermott back into the ball game. McDermott back into the game as they're wiping up the perspiration off of the floor. It's a one point Eagle lead. They have led this whole ball game. Don't think they've been behind at any point. They have a one-point lead and the ball with 8.40 to go in the game in regulation. Burton having to settle for long threes and whatnot now. Here's Robinson trying to go hoopward. Can't do it. Inside to Hartman. There's the jump hook from short end. Halfway down. Rattles out. Austin with the ball, and Benedictine has a chance for the lead. Austin to Bristol. Tip knocked away on the floor, both sides with it, tied up. It's Central Methodist basketball on the alternating possession. As Burton and Bristol down on the bottom of the pile. Goes back to Central, so that's one time that they've had a chance to get the lead. Didn't get a shot off. Branham is going to check in. Stegeman, I think, is going to check out after he mops that up where the two players were on the floor together. So they have to go hang the towel back up on the end for future use if needed. And we'll be back to action with Burton inbounding the ball to Robinson. Robinson to McDermott. To Branham. Back to McDermott. He's going to take it down the lane. Tries to bounce pass. Picked off by Timmy. Austin, who's got the hot hand, puts it up and in, and there's the first lead of the night at 59-58 for Benedictine. That comes at 7.45 to go in the ballgame. Coach Sherman going to have to find some scoring from somewhere. Tulane, kick out, three from the corner, rims around no good. Hartman had a hand on it, but no good. As Burton missed it and a timeout called. So we'll keep it here. 7.30 to go and the first lead of the ball game for the Ravens. Ravens are led right now. Matt Austin did not start, has 15 points. Tyson Cathy with 13. And Colby Nichols with 8. On the central side, 17 points right now for Hartman. 12 for James Bird, the second. 11 for Josh Robinson. They're the leading scorers right now. And Kyle McDermott also in double figures with 10 for central. But it's been a scoring drought. The Eagles have been outscored. It was a five-point advantage, so they've been outscored by six here in the second half. Three timeouts for the Eagles left over. Five left for Benedictine. This is Bristol with the basketball. First trip down the floor tonight with a lead. Nichols to the hoop against Branham. Puts it up, and everything that's going up and toward the basket is going in because they're taking it to the hoop. Central can't get the ball down the lane to do that. 
as it's a little switching zone defense out front now. To keep Central from getting down the lane and to keep the ball out of Hartman's hands down underneath. And a foul will be called as James Bird, the second, takes it to the hoop. Foul is on Bristol, his second foul. Two free throws coming for Bird. He's got 12. He is, I guess, his first trip to the uh, free throw line for the night. First one is in the air and good. Cuts it down to two. Eric Cruz back in. Timmy Bout. Eagles with four guards and Hartman on the floor. Second one is good. Waiting to see if we're going to get any pressure at some point in time. Not yet from the Eagles. As Bird waits for Bristol. Nichols almost falls down, but gets it to Austin, who's been the scorer for them lately. Into the corner to Nichols. Branham on him. Nichols tries to turn the corner. Can't get there. Kathy in the corner, a long way away. Nichols jump step, banks it up. No good. Hartman with a rebound. Throws it out of trouble, and it's knocked down by Branham. And Robinson has it. It's a one-point lead for Benedictine. Burton. And a foul called on the pass. Not anywhere close to bonus yet. That's only team foul number four on Benedictine. Only three called against Central here in the second half. It's out of bounds underneath. Foul goes on Bristol. That's his third. Inbounds it comes into the corner. Trying to find some way to get down the lane. There's a runner that banks off no good, but there's Hartman with a rebound. Burton missed the runner. Hartman with a rebound, 19 points, and it's back to a one-point eagle advantage. Kathy thought about a three, thought better of it right in front of his own bench. Burton. Austin fakes a three, wants it now. He does take it and lights it up. Man, he has not missed a shot in a long time. He's up to 18 points off the bench. He is their leading scorer at 13.9, so he's above his average off of the bench. As he is a shooting machine, I'm looking to look and see what his uh, numbers are on. Uh, he is five for nine from the field. And I'm looking to one for two from three-point range, four for four from the free throw line. They've got him at 15, so they haven't gotten his other basket. So he's, there it is. He's six of 10 from the field, including two for three from the three-point line. So he has been uh, their man here in the second half. I don't think he had but two or four points at halftime, and he's at 18 now. So he's been filling it up pretty regularly, and uh, that gives Benedictine a two-point advantage. We'll be back here Wednesday night when the number five men's team or number four men's team, William Penn, comes into town to take on. We'll have the women's game at 530, just like tonight, men's game 730-ish or so. We'll be back here for that. My privilege to be able to do this, to call some ball games for my alma mater. Eagles down two, 5.35 to go. Burton to inbound. To Robinson. McDermott. Bird to the second. And Hartman in the ball game for the Eagles. Hartman with it. Gives it back to Robinson. And Hartman's going to be called for a lean out with a uh, pick. His second foul. Scott back in the ball game for the Ravens. Has the basketball. 
That's Austin. Deep three, halfway down, won't stay though. And a foul called on Hartman, I think, underneath, which is pretty incredible because all he did was go straight up. Rain Hartman with his third personal foul, and he's asking questions, and I think he has every right to ask that question. 5.07 to go. Knocked out of bounds by Robinson. It'll stay with the Ravens. Nicer Scott underneath. Throws it to Kathy. Tyson Kathy with it. Gives it back to Scott. Going to take it down the lane. Takes it right at Hartman. Doesn't get a foul. Down, rolling around. It's five on four coming the other way, and there's a good foul. As Scott still down underneath his own basket. Tyson Kathy with his second personal foul. As we'll see about getting Heiser Scott attended to as he landed. He's laying on his stomach right now. As he took the ball to the hoop. And then took a hard spill. Four players now for Central in double figures. Bird with 14. Hartman with 19. Robinson with 10. Kyle McDermott. Or Robinson with 11. Kyle McDermott with 10. He's rolled over sitting up. Now he's going to stand up. And he's picked up by one of their players, Hunter Schneider, and helped off the floor, which I'm sure didn't make him very happy that that happened. Bristol checks back into the ball game, and we're just about ready to go back at 4.55 to go. Central Methodist basketball trailing by two, side right in front of the central bench. And Robinson comes out to get it. Going to get a pick from Hartman. Hartman rolls, not available. Bird to second, kicks it back out. Inside it goes, and there's a foul as Cruz just double arm uh, elbow shiver to Hartman because he was in a spot where he was uh, he has been scoring from tonight. Second foul on Cruz. Team foul number six, so with the next one, the Eagles will be in the bonus from this point in time forward. They just ran a nice cut, except McDermott had not been handed the ball yet to throw it in. Now he's got the ball. And they try to get it to Hartman, but it's knocked, cut off by Cruz. Stolen, and with a two-point lead and the ball, here come the Ravens. And there's a foul away from the ball, and we're looking to see 23. I don't, there is no 23, so I'm not sure what that was. And there's an offensive foul called. And that could be on Tyson Cathy, his third personal foul. So their big has three. Central's big. Hartman has three. James Bird, the second, has three. Those are the only ones in much foul trouble. McDermott down the lane left-handed. Right-hand scoop. Can't get it to go. Kathy with a rebound. Gets it to Bristol. Cruz thought about a three. Everybody yelled no, so he passed. Bristol, two players, one for each side at the bench, at the scorer's table, ready to come in. Austin down the lane, puts it up, blocked again by Hartman. Fourth block of the ball game for him. Down the road it comes, Burton in the corner. Back to Robinson, McDermott. Bird down the lane, gets it off. Here comes another pick around the corner. Nice pass underneath. And laying it up and in is Hartman, and he's got 21, and we're tied with 3.32 to go. We'll take a quick break here on the Eagle Sports Network, and we'll be back in 30 seconds right after this from one of our sponsors.
Rake Ball Ford Lincoln, my team is driven to be different. Different in a great way because we're going to give you the very best customer satisfaction anywhere. One of the parts about our dealership you will love is our 1995 oil changes. You get a free alignment check, you get a free multi-point inspection, you get a free car wash. Everybody will get all of that combined for 1995. Stop by today or come visit us at rickball.com. 3.32 to go, 64-64, tie ball game. Benedictine with the ball. The next hell ball will go to the Eagles. As they try and hang on, they've been, we we're ahead most of the ball game with about seven and a half minutes to go. Benedictine got their first lead of the ball game. They've had as a three-point advantage being their biggest advantage. Central in the first half had a 12-point advantage. It is Burton, Bird, Robinson, Branham, and Hartman on the floor for the Eagles. Bristol, Timmy, Cruz, Austin, and Nichols on the floor for Benedictine as Bristol will bring it across half court. Cruz, as they bring Hartman out, Cruz playing out beyond the three-point line brings Hartman out away from the basket where he's got four block shots in this ball game. And nice move by Cruz right to the basket as he faked handing the ball off. Turned and went right to the hoop, went by Hartman. And it's back to a two-point advantage. They haven't put the points on the scoreboard yet. There they do. Three minutes to go in the ball game. Hartman with a pick out at the top. Robinson to the hoop. He's fouled. He'll go to the free throw line, and that's on Cruz. And that will be his third personal foul. Nobody with four, but the threes are starting to pound, count up pretty good. Two players on the central side with three. Three players on the Raven side with three. Robinson. First free throw good. Five for five from the free throw line. Can tie it with one more. In the air. Rattles around no good. And Nichols with a rebound. So one point lead for Benedictine. Cruz looks inside. Gets it inside. Timmy scores. He's fouled. And he'll go to the free throw line. Jaden Temme with the score. He's got seven. He's going to go to the free throw line. Five points, seven points in the ball game for him. Three-point advantage. This would be the biggest lead. Rattles around no good. And Bird to the second with the rebound. He's going to take it toward the hoop, steps in, tries to pass it to Hartman, but Hartman was looking for the rebound, not a shot or a pass. And Matt Austin with the basketball. 20 seconds left on the shot clock. Bristol a long way from the basket. Takes it to the hoop, lays it up, can't get it to go, but after it doesn't go in, the whistle blows and a foul is called. And that will go against Burton. His fourth personal foul. Jaden Bristol at the line. Looking at the scoreboard, and it says a zero on the board for him. Makes the first one, makes it a four-point advantage with 2.10 to go. Second free throw, also good, and a timeout called. 32nd, we'll keep it here. Second point for Bristol. Five-point advantage, the biggest advantage of the ball game for Benedictine. They were down five at the half, 39-34, 70 points. I'm looking, their average scoring in the season is 71.7, so they're right at that. Central average is 73.7. They're below their average, and they trail by five, but they have the basketball. 
with 2.10 to go. Shot clock gives them an opportunity to get the ball back several times before this game expires. But they're going to have to get good shots and uh, find a way to make those work. Eight turnovers for the Eagles, still not bad in the game. Down to 48% from the floor, 50% now for Benedictine. 12 of 15 for Benedictine from the free throw line, 11 of 15 for the Eagles, so no advantage there. More threes, less twos for the Eagles. Burton taking it down the lane, little floater won't go, tipped around. Hartman had his hands on it, but it gets away and it goes to Bristol, down five with the ball. Jaden Bristol, done a nice job of floor management in this game tonight. Now he's got Branham switched over on him. They look like they're intent on uh, running the play clock down to get a shot. Down to 10, Bristol down the lane, puts up a runner, can't get it to go, tipped around, and out with it comes Burton. Robinson, going to take it to the hoop, try and find a way to get there, can't do it. Bird the second. Burton, back to Bird. He had a couple of threes early on. Branham in the corner for a much-needed three. Yes. Jake Branham. Seven in the ball game for him. Kathy across. Austin with it. I've seen teams slow it down and then not be able to get back into a normal offense. And right now, Benedictine's milking the clock down the lane. Gets a shot blocked, and it goes out of bounds. Ten on the shot clock, 54.8 to go. Two-point advantage for Benedictine. And we've got another timeout called by Benedictine. We'll keep it here and remind you we'll be back here Wednesday night when William Penn comes to town for a doubleheader. Let me see if I can lay my hands on the standings to see. William Penn is number one, by the way, on the men's side. They are number four in the nation. There's my William Penn, 14 and one overall. And the 14 and one Lady Eagles will take on William Penn's ladies as well as I look for uh, their record in the women's file of stuff. William Penn, six and three. So again, an opportunity for the Lady Eagles to put some distance between them and some teams right behind them in the standings. It'll be Benedictine basketball underneath their own basket. Whistle blows. Central players come running out. Hartman asks the last question about what he's supposed to do. And he's going to go guard Kathy in the, in the corner, which frees up the lane for somebody else to do a lob. Nichols can't get it to go. Tipped around, and it ends up in the hands of the Eagles. Here comes Robinson taking it to the hoop. Lays it up and in. Tie ball game at 70. And we've got a timeout called while the officials talk to the official scorekeeper. Possession arrow points toward Benedictine. Cruz checks in. Kathy checks out. 44 to go. So the Eagles will get the ball back at least once more. Pending a rebound on a missed shot. Turnover. And another timeout called by Benedictine. We'll go ahead and take a break here and run uh, a 30-second ad because I haven't seen yet if it's a 30-second or a one-minute, but we'll be back. It's a full minute, so we'll take the full 30, and we'll be back in just a minute for the last 41.1 of this tie ball game from Puckett Fieldhouse. At last, an approach to teaching and learning that connects the traditional classroom to the real world at Central Methodist University. Now you can learn the way you live and the way you'll work with the new Digital U, available only on the campus of CMU. 
be more. Scoreboard says tie ball game, 41.1 to go. One timeout left on the board for the Eagles, two on the board for the Ravens. Ravens basketball have to come the length of the court and see what they can do. It's been Austin who has been their big go-to guy here in the second half, Matt Austin. He's got 18 points in the ball game. It's Bristol. Cuts on the side as they move the ball up. Nichols, Cruz, Bristol, Temi, and Austin on the floor for the Ravens. This is Bristol with the ball. 13 seconds difference between the play clock and the game clock. Austin with it, hounded by Robinson. Cruz with a three on the way, rims out no good. Soderholm with a rebound. Shot clock is off. They're going to get across half court and call a timeout, and that's the last one for the Eagles. They've got 17 seconds to try and find a way to score and win this ball game. Been a good ball game. Very happy to be here to help you with uh, all of this tonight. Thanks again to all the crew here at CMU. My alma mater, I spent a lot of time, as I said in the first uh, ball game, the women's ball game, I spent a lot of time in this field house watching basketball and practicing baseball here years ago. There is a banner that hangs over there somewhere that hangs somewhere. I will try and find it. It's, it's not much of a banner. It's the only one. It was the only one for a long time, the only baseball championship that Central had gotten until the past few years. So I'm looking, I'm sure it's over on the other side where I can't see it, but that's okay. I know it's here somewhere. 17 seconds to go. Eagles are shooting 73% from the free throw line. It would be a bonus unless it's a shooting foul. James Bird, the second, five for seven from the field. Kyle McDermott, four for seven from the field. Hartman, 10 of 14, but I can't imagine. He's not even in the ball game, so I'm going to say I can't imagine that they let him get the ball down low without fouling him along in advance. So in it comes. Robinson with the ball in his hands as we tick down to the end. You see the clock. We're down to eight, seven. He heads to the hoop. Tries to put up a shot. He's fouled. He's going to go to the free throw line, shoot two with 3.6 seconds to go. It's on Bristol. Five of six from the free throw line is Robinson in this ballgame. He's got a pair to shoot here. Benedictine has a timeout left. First free throw of two, good. Robinson in the ball game has 15 and a timeout called. Don't know who called it. We'll look to see who gets the timeout taken off of the board. I would guess that would be Central Methodist call that. This is what we're going to do. If he makes it, this is what we're going to do. If he misses it, this is what we're going to do. They take it off on the Benedictine side. So according to that, Benedictine does not have a timeout after this made after this free throw is attempted. So Coach Sherman over there going through the whole thing. If we make it, this is what we're going to do. If we miss it, this is what we're going to do. Don't let them launch uncontested. Don't let them throw long. Just 3.6 to go. Eagles still have one timeout. 71-70, what's been a whale of a ball game from Puckett Fieldhouse on the campus of Central Methodist University. If they're all going to be like this, I may come back more regularly. Coach Sherman, Coach Davis, both friends of mine from my time here and shortly thereafter. I did PA here for a while and helped out with some things around the basketball baseball program. I came back after I graduated. 
from school here, came back, and uh, was an assistant baseball coach here for about six years. So I was around uh, Coach Sherman, Coach Davis on a regular basis. Both fine men, and uh, if you have a son or a daughter playing basketball here, they are in great hands with these two gentlemen. Both exemplary individuals who portray and uh, being gentlemen, which they are, and the school gets a great image out of this by those two guys. One more free throw for Robinson. Right now, the Eagles trying to figure out if they want to put anybody on the free throw line or on the uh, foul lane or not. It would be in their best interest, I would think, to put somebody down there to keep from a rebound and a long throw. I don't know. Oh, we've got the officials over at the table looking at something, talking about something. That's why all this free time is going on. Benedictine's coach says, hey, come here. I want to talk to you guys. Central's over there talking. Sherman's talking to his guys. Again. I saw Jeff Sherman play a lot of basketball here. And then when he was done playing athletically here, he and I played on some slow-pitch softball teams together. And uh, I don't know that I've seen anybody, have seen anyone run as fast as Jeff Sherman did in his younger days. I believe he told me at one point in time, he was a Colorado, Colorado State champion in the 100-yard, 100 100-meter 100 dash. Don't have no reason to doubt that. Josh Robinson, second free throw, also good. And now the conversation, it was 3.6, and it's now down to 2.3. I don't know what that was about. Somebody thinking they called somebody called timeout as they readjust now they put 4.6 up there which was I guess what they were talking about to the basket lays it up and in Bristol scores right before the buzzer and we're going to overtime it was 3.6 when he shot the free throws they conversed and made it 4.6 and they're wanting a Matt Sherman is out asking why was there 4.6 on the clock instead of 3.6, but it all goes to avail, and they're asking him why didn't he, he, why didn't they call him for stepping out of bounds because they think that he stepped on the sideline as he took the ball up the court. Doesn't matter. 72-72 as the officials talk, but I can't see how they're going to change anything at this point. It's already kind of gone. It's a little bit late now to be changing something. But they're going to talk at the scorer's table a little bit more, but it looks to me like we've got bonus basketball. More talk. Both sides are. Shot got off before the buzzer, but if it had been 3.6 sec seconds left, it wouldn't have gotten off before the buzzer. But it's not going to change. Whatever it is is what it is. We're going to have a five-minute overtime. as the fans are hooting and hollering a little bit. 72-72, and we're going to overtime. Hartman checks back in for the overtime. With no time on the clock. I'm looking at the uh, stats that they put up. Three seconds to go was a free throw made by Josh Robinson with 3.6. When they inbounded the ball, there was 4.6 on the clock, and that made a little bit of difference in this final outcome. So we're going to bonus basketball. Bristol, who's the hero right now to get this to overtime? Kathy, Timmy, Nichols, and Austin on the floor. Robinson. Bird the second. Soderholm. Hartman. And Burton on the floor. And Robinson's got the ball to start the overtime. 
see if the Eagles can recuperate from, recover from the almost win. And Burton right to, or Robinson right to the hoop, lays it up and in, and the Eagles have a two-point lead. 15 seconds into the first overtime. Bristol, Austin, Nichols, Bristol again. Back to him again after a pass off. Inside it goes, and there's a slip, and there's going to be a foul called on Timmy. That foul going against Jaden Timmy for pushing off. He got open, but he fouls, and that's the 10th foul. So from now on out, all personal fouls will be two shots for the Eagles. The Eagles still have a couple of fouls before the Ravens get to that. Robinson tripped, goes to the floor, nothing called, rolls out of bounds, and it will be Benedictine basketball. Tyson Cathy hands it to Bristol, Jaden Bristol. Gets it to Timmy. To Nichols, reverse to the corner. Nichols with a shot, or Austin with a shot, and he finally misses one. And the Eagles have the basketball with four minutes to go. We're one minute into the first overtime. And it looks like Josh Robinson has decided to take this upon himself a lot. Burton with it. Inside it goes. Jump hook up and in, and that's good by Hartman. He's got 23 now, and it's a four-point lead early in this overtime. Bristol into the corner. Nichols tries to fake a three, gets it back out. Kathy with a three straight up, no good. Tipped around. It ends up in the hands of James Bird, the second. Eagles with a four-point lead, first four points of overtime, 3.20 to go with the basketball. Both sides get an extra timeout in this overtime. Eagles have two. Benedict team with one. Bird, the second. Rolls, kicks it off to the corner. Soderholm wanted to take a three, didn't. Kicks it back out. Robinson will take a three, no good. As Hartman had a shot going to the basket, kicked it to the corner, and then Soderholm started to take it to the basket, kicked it out, and another shot, and miss. Bristol with a little ball fake gets it up and in over Hartman. Eagles had a chance to stretch it out to six or even seven. Missed that shot. Benedictine comes down, scores, and it's back to a two-point ball game as we're almost halfway through this first overtime. Burton. Bird. Wants to drive, wants to spin to the hoop, puts it up, gets it to go, counts, and he's fouled, and Nichols is on the deck in disbelief as the foul goes. Colby Nichols, 10 points in the ball game, or 16 points in the ball game now for Bird the second, trying to finish off the three-point play traditionally wise. Seth Stegman checking ready to check in. Comes up short, and Nichols with a rebound to Austin. Matt Austin filled it up in the second half, missed his first shot here in overtime. Wanting to go again to the hoop, finds his way to the basket, puts it up, no good, going to be fouled. And as long as that's not on number one, James Bird the second, his fourth. Burton has four. Bird has four. Hartman has three. Austin's wanting a technical call on somebody for talking too much. Austin at the free throw line. Rattles around and in. Five for five from the free throw line for him. Down to a three point, one possession game. One more free throw for Austin. Six-foot junior from St. Joe. Second one is good. Two-point ball game. 2-12. Robinson with the basketball. Going to walk it up. Coach Sherman barks out what he wants. Hartman, top of the key. Gives it to Bird. Jumper on the way. No good. Cruz with a rebound. Hands it off to Bristol. On the run. And Nichols lays it up and in. And the game's tied with 1.46 to go.
So that five point lead vanishes in a hurry for the Eagles. Hartman sets a screen. Robinson has a mismatch, which means Hartman's got a huge mismatch, but they rally to it. Kick it back out, Robinson. Six on the shot clock. Pulls up for a three, won't get it to go. Hartman tips it around, ends up in the hands, off of the hands of Burton, out of bounds. Isaiah Burton had his hands on it for a new shot clock with 1.15, but could not corral the basketball, and Bristol has it. Chance for their first lead of overtime. Timmy with it. Cruz, Bristol. Timmy fakes a three. Austin won't fake a three from out there. He'll take a three from out there. Comes around the corner, kicks it. Cruz misses, but Nichols with a rebound. Didn't hit anything, and there's a shot clock violation, shot clock violation as the ball didn't hit the rim. So 44 and a half. Central could play two, two for one here if they can get a shot within the first 10, a good shot within the first 10 seconds. McDermott back in, Branham back in. Stegeman and Hartman check out, small lineup of shooters and a timeout called by the Eagles. As Coach Sherman wants to talk about it, he has one extra one. He has two in this overtime to use. So one timeout on either side at this point, 40.6 to go. If you get a good shot early, you can take it because you know you'll get the ball back if you rebound. Looking at the rebounds in the ball game, the Eagles have been out-rebounded 40-30, to 30, and that has hurt them at times. So we'll see what Coach Sherman comes up with, what he wants to do. It'll be Eagles basketball traveling the length of the court to their offensive end. 27 on the shot clock as they had the ball for a few seconds before they brought it in. It'll be right by the Benedictine Vents is where they'll inbound from. 40.6 to go. And what's been a very competitive, evenly matched ball game as by the fact that we're in overtime and tied in overtime. Nichols, Timmy, Scott, Bristol, and Austin. So they've gone smaller as well. It'll be Josh Robinson with the basketball. He's got 18 points in the ball game. Taking the ball down the lane and hell ball and it will go to Benedictine as James Bird the second tried to go to the hoop. Ball was held. Alternate possession goes to Benedictine. 2.2 seconds difference between the game clock and the shot clock. So they're going to have to put a shot up, but they don't have to put it up very early. Timmy, Bristol, back to Timmy. Back to Bristol. Across half court, timeout called. Last timeout for Benedictine, 24.3 to go 23 on the shot clock. which there was two some odd difference, so I guess it's gonna roll to 22 as soon as they turn it back on. Coaches Sherman discussing things on the side. Hartman coming back in to guard the basket. One timeout, so if it's a shot and a miss, Central's got a chance for a timeout. They have a timeout regardless if they can get the ball back. Typical Heart of America basketball action. Very uh, competitive conference up and down the lineup. As the uh, Lady Eagles lone losses to Evangel, and they've got a losing record, and the Evangel beat the Lady Eagles here at Puckett Fieldhouse. So, ball be on the side right by the Benedictine bench when it's brought back in. It'll be a one, if, this, if there is a foul by the Eagles, non-shooting foul will be a one and one. 
as Benedictine is not yet in the double bonus. Eight fouls against Central here in the second half. Ball on the side. Let's see if the Eagles can get a steal. No timeouts. They've got to get the uh, Benedictine has to get the ball in bounds. Doesn't look like that'll be an issue as Bristol comes to it and has it. That is ja James Bird, the second, out on the ball with Bristol. Down to 10 on the shot clock. They've cleared the whole side out for him. It goes off of his leg and out of bounds. Oh, and it stays with Benedictine, even though it looked like it went off of. They're going to go look at it, I guess. They're going to walk over all the officials. Two of the officials are going to walk over to the scorer's table. I don't know if they have a monitor over there that they can use. They do. Don't know what they'll be able to see off of that monitor, but they're going to take a look at it and see this is a big call because Benedictine keeps the ball. They're under their own basket, and they're going to get the last shot before time runs out. If it goes over to Central, Central's going to have a chance to get the ball down the floor and get a shot off before time elapses here in overtime number one. Six point four as they continue to look at the monitor over at the scorer's table. See if they can figure out. If they can't figure it out, it stays with Benedictine because that was the call on the floor to begin with. As they keep looking, and they're looking at the clock as well to see if any additional time should be put or any adjustment to the time should be made. We continue to wait. Officials continue to look. It must not be very obvious if they've had to look at it for this long. So the longer they look at it, the less chance it is that uh, the call on the floor is going to be overturned. We just continue to wait. Important call. Whoever gets the ball is going to have a chance at, the, at a shot to win it in the first overtime. So possession is a key issue right now. And they haven't changed the possession arrow from the last time. If there's a hell ball, it still shows that it is Benedictine ball. But they got the last one. That was down on this end when James Bird the second went to the hoop and it was tied up and Benedictine got the ball with 40 seconds left. So, Benedictine is clapping, so they still have the ball out of bounds underneath their own basket. Be looking for some cuts, some picks come off of it to try and get close to the rim somehow. Austin with it. He's going to fire up a jumper. Gets it away. A rim no good. And we looks like we've got overtime number two. Coach Sherman clapping his hands. Good effort by his boys there to stop that as they went towards Matt Austin for the final shot. His shot came up short. Good defense on him. And we're going to go to overtime number two. 78-78. It was 72-72. Now it's 78-78 as we go to overtime number two here from Puckett Fieldhouse. Looking at it, Bristol is the only player in foul trouble for Benedictine. He has four. Burton has four for the Eagles, as does James Bird, the second. So both of those players in foul trouble. Eagles will shoot two free throws from here on out. Ravens on the next non-shooting foul, still shooting a one and one. So the Eagles got off to a good start in the overtime. 
up by five, and then two trips down the floor came up empty for the Eagles, and two trips down the floor came up good for the Ravens. As it will be Nichols, Colby Nichols again, jumping center. And coming out is Hartman. Hartman, Branham, Robinson, Bird the second, and Burton. The five players on the floor for the Eagles. Bad toss goes to Benedictine. Wasn't thrown up very well. Bristol, Nichols, Bristol again. Timmy in the corner. Austin fakes the three, pulls out. Has Burton on him. Coming around. Going to try and take it down the lane. Has a shot blocked. Foul called. And we'll see which one as two of the players standing there have four fouls apiece. James Burton. James Bird, the second, fouls out. He will leave the game with 16. Saying, I went up straight, but not going to get that changed. And Austin will go to the free throw line. As Coach Sherman will use his 20 seconds for a substitute to get a little free coaching in. So Matt Austin goes to the free throw line where he is a perfect 6-4-6 six, six in this ball game, and he's going to shoot a pair. Austin averaging 13.9, has 21 right now after that made free throw. And the first lead of overtime number two goes to, to Benedictine, second free throw, missed, and it's a one-point advantage. Robinson, one of the big scorers in Bird, the second is out of the game, so Robinson tries to take it to the basket, lays it up and in, cuts through, lays it in, scores, and he's fouled, basket counts. And the foul goes on Tyson Cathy, his fourth. Eagles with a one-point lead into the free throw line will go number 10. Josh Robinson, seven for eight for him from the free throw line. We've not played a minute yet. Don't get too excited. His free throw is good. Two-point advantage for the Eagles. Bristol with the ball. Timmy. Nichols. Not a three-point threat. Dribbles around. Looks for Austin in the left corner. Kathy straight away. Nope. Gives it to Bristol. Into the corner to Nichols. He's going to take it to the hoop. Throws it out. Austin with a three on the way. No good. And down with a rebound is Burton, and the Eagles have the ball. 340 to go in overtime number two. Bird, sec the second, has fouled out of the ball game. They're going to let the clock run a little bit. Comes to McDermott on this side, checked into the ball game. Beats a double team. Two Robinson. Five on the shot clock. McDermott. Doesn't see it. Robinson does. Puts it up at the buzzer. Goes off the rim. No good. And Nichols runs it down in the corner. 3-10 to go in overtime number two. Bristol with it. Looking for a pick from Kathy. Wants him to go the other way. Bristol doesn't do it. Lays it off. Kathy blows the layup. Gets his own rebound. Misses and gets it back the third time and scores. Tried to dunk it. Came up just a little bit short. 81-81. Under three to go. They've cleared the lane out for Robinson. Branham, McDermott, tries to go somewhere, gets it back to Robinson. 
Here comes a pick from Hartman. Got Timmy on him. Fake, ball fake, puts it up, no good. Hartman with a rebound, puts it up and scores. 25 in the ball game for Hartman. Two point advantage, more than halfway through overtime number two. Can the Eagles get a stop in another basket to expand this out to a two possession game? Timmy drives down the lane. Little runner scoops out, no good, and Branham with a rebound. There's the stop. Now can the Eagles score again and stretch this out to a four or five point advantage? Robinson's got to be tired because I think he's played just about every minute, and I tell you, he's got zero fouls up on the scoreboard. Hartman, Branham, spins, McDermott. Inside it goes, but Hartman was going left. The ball went right. Turnover. Austin with it. He's a big three-point threat. Wants his Kathy to get out of the way so he can shoot a three. Rolls out no good. The legs maybe starting to give out a little bit as Austin's missed several in a row now. And Phillips has got the ball for the Eagles. Coach Sherman still got a little voice left as he's telling his players to get out of the way. And now come set, he tells Hartman to come set a pick. But Robinson says not yet. Now come set it with 10 on the play clock. Into the corner, three from deep. Good by Burton. Isaiah Burton. And I will be happy to tell you that is his first points of the ball game. He's got three. That big three, five point advantage, 54.2. So it's gonna come down to free throw shooting in just a moment for the Eagles as it's a two possession game. Burton on the floor has not attempted a free throw. Branham is two for two. Robinson is eight for nine. And I'm looking to see who else is on the floor. Uh, if Hartman's on the floor, he's one for three. I can't imagine he is going to be on the floor for very long. One timeout for each team at this point. So the Eagles with a five-point advantage in the second overtime. Whistle blows. First whistle. Tell everybody to come back to action. We'll tell you who the Eagles on the floor are. Stegeman, Branham, Robinson, Burton, and Hartman. Hartman's going to guard the basket. They get a rebound, look for them to call a timeout, get him out of the ball game so he doesn't have to shoot the free throws. Austin with it, inside it goes to Timmy. Turns and puts it up and in with 46 seconds to go. So the Eagles are going to have to shoot, and there will be about 15, 10 seconds or so left on the game clock. As Robinson just doing what he's done the last few times, is just going to stand out there and dribble until 10 seconds or so, and then they'll start their offense. Here comes Stegeman to give him a pick. Loses the handle on the ball, goes out of bounds. It'll stay with Central at five on the shot clock. 21.3 on the game clock. And here comes McDermott, a three-point shooter into the ball game. Hartman going to come out. Burton behind his back, loses it, goes out of bounds. It was two on the shot clock. Now it's 18.6. Overtime number three is just a three-pointer away. Yep, so what will the Eagles do? Will the Eagles foul before a three-pointer can be taken? Bristol with the ball. It'll be a bonus. It's not a two-shot foul. Bristol pulls up for a three. Long, no good. Hartman had the ball, lost it. Goes out to the corner. Cruz running around. There's a three on the way, partially blocked. And there's a foul underneath. I don't know if Hartman got another block off of that or not. It's a foul on Benedictine with 2.6 to go. One free throw. There'll be two free throws shot. One free throw will do it. 
And I think it's Burton who made the big three just a moment ago to put him up by five, is headed to the free throw line. And I mentioned before, he is has not attempted a free throw tonight. Timeout called by Benedictine. That's their last one. 2.6 to go. 25 points for Hartman. 21 for Robinson. 16 for Bird the second. 10 for McDermott. Five players, four players in double figures for the Eagles. On the other side, Matt Austin, 21. Tyson Cathy, 15. 12 for Colby Nichols. So Burton needing to make one out of two as the officials have a conference. And now they're going to walk over and look at the clock again and probably figure out if it's 2.6 or what the time left is as they're going to walk over to the monitor. So we've got another review going on. Everybody gets to make up plays. So Burton with a chance to put this one away with 2.6 to go. Needs to make one of two. See if I can grab some stats real quick and find something. Since they're not in that stack. I'm not going to find. I was going to tell you what kind of free throw shooter he might be on the season, but not laying my hands on that piece of information right now. Don't know which one it's in. Up would be in this pile. Robinson, Josh Robinson, free throw. Uh, they've got field goal. They've got everything on there but free throws. Oh, there's free throws. He is a 72.5% free throw shooter on the season. This is his first free throw of this double overtime ball game. As they continue to look at the clock, I remind you at the end of regulation, they put another second up, went from 3.6 to 4.6, and Benedictine scored as time was expiring. So they're looking at the clock and the foul to see if they need to put anything more than 2.6 on. The crowd is stuck around. If the uh, Sherman family is watching out in Colorado, I see your daughter-in-law and a grandson down under on the front row. They keep it, it appears, at 2.6. And this has done nothing but kind of ice Isaiah Burton, as he's just been standing around for a while, waiting to shoot his two free throws. Nobody on the lane for the Eagles. First free throw in the air. Rattles around and falls. That'll just about do it, barring a, a disaster. Fouling on a three and it being made. If he makes this one, there's nothing to be done. He does. He sinks them both. He's got five points, all of them here in the double overtime. There is a shot put up and no good by Scott. And there's your final score. 88-83 double overtime as the Eagles come back and win. They go to 5-11 and on the season and 4-6 and in the conference. They'll be back here Wednesday night to take on William Penn. We'll give you a quick quick recap, and then we're going to call it because it's double overtime. Hartman, 25 points to lead the Eagles. 21 points for Robinson. 16 for Bird. 10 for McDermott. And five big points out of Isaiah Burton at the end of this. And Burton averages almost 20 points a game, and he had the last five of, overtime, of the second overtime. On the Benedictine side, they were led by Matt Austin with 21, Tyson Cathy with 15, and Colby Nichols with 12. Those were the, the scorers in double figures. So that'll do it from Puckett Fieldhouse. 
my first foray into hard action this year, and it goes double overtime. So uh, maybe Coach Sherman will let me come back since he won. But we'll soon see. We'll see Wednesday night uh, when we're on the air, 5.30 women's game, 7.30 or so men's game from Puckett Fieldhouse, Central Methodist University. This is Charlie Brown.